Hey everyone, welcome back to Make the Music. We are in part four, if you can believe it, in our series, How to Create a Song from Scratch. Today we're gonna to be going over bass elements. So I got my bass guitar. We're gonna be tracking some bass guitar for this song, as well as laying down some bass synth elements as well. There will be a separate section for virtual instruments in general, like pianos, keys, strings, things like that. But now that I'm sort of in bass world, I'm thinking in those terms, I will add the bass synth elements as long as well as the bass guitar so i know those are working well together so that's what we're going to get into here i'm going to move into my daw and then show you some clips of me tracking some bass and give you some tips for how to get some good bass performances in your song this is a kind of a pop rock rock song but for whatever song you have there's going to be some form of a bass element usually and i'll show you some tips specifically for tracking a good bass guitar in your in your song. So let's get into it here. So I'm plugging my bass guitar into my Focusrite Scarlett solo interface. And for a lot of guitar inputs and things like that, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the interface down to just above the lowest setting. These pickups, they've got quite a bit of gain on them. So no need to go too far. I'm gonna play some notes. Just to make sure it's not clipping. It sounds pretty good there. So the first thing I'm gonna do now in my DAW here is load up a bass guitar track. Call it bass guitar. And what I like to do a lot of times when tracking bass is use a bass DI and an amp track. I'm gonna click record and input. I wanna make sure I'm getting input too because that's what my bass guitar is playing through. Good, I'm starting to get input there. What I actually will do is I'll load up something like Amplitude 5 just so I can play through some sort of an amp signal and I can tune my guitar as well because tuning bass is really important. Bass guitar, depending on what note you're playing, it can easily intonate in and out of tune. So it's always good to be consistent about the tuning you're using. So I'm pulling up Amplitude here. Amplitude here. I just want a very basic, you know, SVT sort of sound. That's gonna work great for me. Now let's go ahead and lower the gain of the bass guitar a little bit. What I'm also going to do is now go to the tuner. Make sure your bass guitar is tuned up. I would tune it in between every few takes just to make sure all the strings are in tune. And you don't, when you come to mixing phase, realize, oh crap, half of my bass takes were out of tune. So I'm gonna go ahead and tune up here as well. Okay, so that sounds pretty good to me. Another tip is if you're going to tune bass to tune it slightly, ever so slightly flatter than what your standard tuning would show. Because when you play notes aggressively, you fret them, right? And you're, you're getting into the song. A lot of times that's gonna bring the pitch up just slightly of your input signal. And so if you tune ever so slightly flat and you start playing aggressively, you shouldn't have to worry about the intonation. But if you tune dead on, if you play a note like this and it's perfectly in tune, well, when you start actually playing the song and you get aggressive with it, it's actually gonna go slightly sharp and out of tune. So that's one of my tips there. Another tip is utilize your tone knobs on your bass guitar. So I have three. One is a control for treble, one is for volume, or, or I should say one is for the different, each one is for the different pickup set, and one is for the total volume. For this bass guitar, it can get really trebly if I have this turned up all the way. So I'm gonna turn it down about halfway. I do want some top end in the bass, but I don't want it to sound too stringy, too high end for this song. It doesn't need to be poking out like an aggressive rock track or something like that but I wanna give it some good consistent low end there. So go ahead, play with your knobs, mess with it, mess with your amp sim in your DAW until you feel like you have a sound that's really working for you. I feel like this is gonna work well for me and get yourself set up. So I have bass guitar, track color. Because my acoustic guitar performance wasn't like the absolute best, I'm gonna go ahead and mute that for some sections or maybe just turn it down a little bit just so I, I know where I am, but like it's not perfectly in tune or in time, and I don't want that to mess with my own performance. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that there. We've got the drum set up. So now I can go ahead and start tracking. I know what sections I want the bass to come in. There's not gonna be a ton of bass in the verses, maybe building into the first chorus. So let's go ahead and track some bass guitar. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and hit record here, and let's start laying down some bass parts for this track.
Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording there. The best part about playing in large chunks for your song is that you can play with more dynamic because you're not constantly stopping yourself every five seconds. And you can always go back and punch in whenever you want. So I went through chorus two. And then I can go back, evaluate the performance. Maybe there's parts I like, maybe there's parts I don't like. So mostly good, there's a few out of time notes here or there that I can go in and punch in and replace the spots. But overall, I'm feeling the dynamic of the entire track, so I'm changing my playing as I go along. It also keeps you from being too repetitive when you're playing, when you play the song all the way through. So I have nothing wrong with you going by section by section. If that's what works for you, that's great. Some songs definitely call for that. But if I want a more organic performance with real instruments, I try to play it in large sections. It just has a more a real organic feel. So now that I've tracked some bass, I wanna now move in with some virtual instrument bass parts probably only one or two i don't want to overload this track here but i'm just going to call this bass synth and we're going to play around with some sounds to help complement our bass guitar performance which is very natural but i want something to fill out the low end in a more uh, synthetic way you, you could say so with our song we have this i mean that bass is sounding good giving a nice punchy low end, but what I wanna add is something like an expand patch, which has tons of virtual instruments in it. And I want to add uh, a bass synth. So if we go to synth basses, I really have some of my favorite patches. One of my uh, favorite ones is round and deep is a pretty good uh, bass patch. So let's check that out here. I'm really looking for some sustaining notes that kind of help fill out the low end. So if I insert new MIDI item, or you can do something like a virtual MIDI keyboard, which I do have a MIDI keyboard uh, on me, but I'm not gonna use it for this bass part. I'll bring it in when I do the real synthetic instruments. You can actually track with the MIDI keyboard, the virtual MIDI keyboard, I should say. And so if I go to Reaper, I go input MIDI, virtual MIDI keyboard, all channels. <laughs> I can actually play along with my mouse uh, if I so choose. So um, we can choose the center note. It's going to be bass. So let's go to C2 as our center note. Okay, that's going to work great. I might modify the sound. That's round and deep. Let's try basic thump. Um, I do have a couple other. Hollow thumpers, a good one. There we go. That's just a very bass synthetic element there. I don't need it in the verse part. Let's track some for the course. So I'm going to hit record again and just click along and get some virtual MIDI bass here in our course section. I'm also going to add the click here, the metronome. Okay, so that's a real rough performance there. But you can see these two bass elements working together. So you can see that wasn't the best played uh, synth performance there. What I'm gonna go in next do is uh, edit the MIDI, change it so that's all time aligned. But those are some ideas there. What I might do is just go bass in general, lump the bass guitar and uh, bass synth together under the bass bus here. So now I have two elements in bass. And now the full track is kind of sounding like this. So not bad. So that is bass guitar and bass synth elements. You may decide to completely do it all in MIDI. You may not want to track any real instruments. You may want to track only bass guitar, right? You may even have a cab that you mic up, but this is a pretty common approach in the home studio. Just go bass directly into your DAW, maybe pull up some amp sims, do some processing with that, or you know, just completely program the bass. So those are a couple options. This is how I do it with my tracks. I'm gonna go ahead, finish tracking the bass guitar, finish tracking the bass MIDI, 
And then once that's all done, we'll come in with electric guitars and acoustic guitars. I'll show you an approach there. A good home studio in the box approach to doing both those things especially acoustic guitar, we're gonna have to mic that up because our other acoustic guitar was just a DI input. So we're gonna go ahead and do that in our next lesson. If you're following along, let me know how's your track coming along? Do you have some bass elements? How was tracking day there? I'm really excited to hear your guys' end products. I'm really ex excited. I'm feeling like this song is coming together. Finally, once we get guitars and synths in, it's really gonna you know have a nice vibe and then we'll get to vocal tracking. So please like and subscribe to the channel so you can follow along with this. I also have a free guide called the Home Studio Toolbox, which is a free guide giving you all a bunch of free material to help you start making music in your home studio. It's all free software and things that you can utilize to start getting great sounding recordings. And I hope you download that for free in the description box. Anyways, I'll see you in the next part of the series. I will see you guys next time. <laughs>